Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning prayer for January the 26th, 2021. My name is Susan Drain, and I'm a lay reader here at the Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax. Continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it. Let us be still and aware of the presence of God within and all around. God of all peoples, we thank you for this day and for this time when we can turn our thoughts from busyness and responsibility to your light and your peace. We thank you for all our gifts, your creation around us, the abundance of your provision for us, friends and loved ones, for both the blessings and the challenges that enrich our lives. We thank you for work, for every task, however small, and every word, however quiet, that advances your kingdom in this world. We thank you for the wisdom of your way and for all who teach us and prompt us and remind us and challenge us to find and follow your way of justice and peace, of respect and kindness and truth. Amen. Today we remember Timothy and Titus, St. Paul's trusted and well-loved companions and agents in spreading the good news of Christ. Our reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul went on also to Derbe and to Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and had him circumcised because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went from town to town, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in numbers daily. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Theatera and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Here ends the reading. We know very little of the background of Paul's recruits. Timothy's father was a Greek and his mother a Jewish believer. We know even less about Titus, except that he was Greek. Both of them are recruited to help Paul preach Christ. Paul's particular assignment is to take the gospel to the Gentiles, that is, 
beyond the Jewish communities in which the gospel was first made known, as far as to Macedonia, the northern area of Greece. The history of the gospel among the Gentiles is not smooth sailing. The fact that Timothy had to be circumcised is a reminder that many thought that to follow Jesus' way required that one first convert to Judaism, Jesus' own faith. It makes a kind of sense. If you want to join with us, you must become the same as us. That's not the view that ultimately prevailed. Instead, Christianity made space for diversity among the followers of Jesus. People who came from Asia Minor and Greece and Macedonia and Rome and even Canada. And not just the men, as one might expect in patriarchal societies, but women in their own right, tough women like Lydia, who was a merchant and the head of her own household, a person who opened her heart and made up her own mind and talked the strangers out of their reluctance to accept her hospitality. This is surely one of the strengths of, this, of Christianity, that there is room in this tent for all sorts. In a passage from the Gospel of John, also set for today, Jesus says that he knows his own sheep and they know him. And he adds, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. I've been thinking a lot about these things in recent months and weeks, as we look south of the border, where the need for spaciousness and elbow room and tolerance of diversity and difference is so acute. I can't do much about the uncivil war that Joe Biden named in his country. But here in Halifax, I can be a bit more like Lydia in my comings and goings, ready to attend to the words of the stranger, to respect difference while holding firm for what, to what we share, perhaps even to welcome change and difference into my heart and my home. May it be so. Before we turn to the tasks of the day, let us pray for ourselves and for one another. Give us strength for this day. Comfort those who suffer and those who mourn. Send us wherever we are needed and sustain us on our way. Keep our hearts and minds open to the new and the challenging. Make us builders of bridges rather than walls. And we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.